Welcome to Crazy Real Estate Stories. Okay, this is true. This actually just closed today, so now I can talk about it. And I got the buyer's permission, and he and I decided this video should be called Expect the Unexpected. Okay, so what happened? So first of all, if you like the channel, like it. If you wanna subscribe, subscribe. If you love Crazy Real Estate Stories, or you have one, please chime in, because we do love the crazy ones when they turn out okay in the end, okay? So let's talk about what happened. So pretty simple, you know, uh, first time home buyer using his VA loan to purchase a home in Texas. Cool, everything goes as planned, appraisal comes in, inspections are done, everything's great. I get a call from the closing table. I don't usually get calls from closing tables and the reason is we do everything up front. So it's like you guys know what to expect when you're sitting down and I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong? It must be something, you know, minor. Maybe it's, you know, a miscommunication, something like that, right? Jen, the seller won't sign. What? Jen, the seller won't sign. Um, <laughs> excuse me? I've signed all my documents and titles telling me that one of the sellers has signed, the other one won't. Okay, why won't the other one sign? They said they won't make enough money. Hmm. Okay, look, as a lender, there's nothing I can do, right? The sellers have to sign in order to sell the house. Well, just as with any of these stories, it's never that cut and dry. There's always something weird, some back current that makes it interesting, right? So, the buyer's awesome. Like, he is amazing, wonderful, really even tempered, which is important because when you get into situations like this, you've got to like, you know, kind of take a breath because otherwise it can get wild. So, okay. Why does, so there's a couple things that happen. First of all, the listing agent was terrible, terrible. I don't think the listing agent had ever sold a house in their life before. And I don't think they should ever sell another one. That's the first thing because generally what happens, like, let's say I'm going to sell my house. The first thing I'm going to do before it's even in contract is I'm going to be having my agent get from title what's known as a net sheet. A net sheet tells me if I get a specific price, how much I should expect that I'm going to get back. Okay. And you can tell this with the mortgage payoff and everything else. Now, once you're in contract as a seller, I would ask for another net sheet. Okay. So that I know what I'm going to get back. Now, if you guys are watching this and you're sellers and you're like, Oh my God, I haven't gotten, I don't know what I'm going to get guys. Ask the title company, ask the attorney, ask the escrow officer, you know, whichever one you have, ask them for a seller net sheet. Also give them your mortgage payoff information because the amount that gets paid off, it's not just just what you see owed, there's always interest, okay? So in this case, they never got a net sheet until like a couple days before. And then the listing agent, I don't think had ever seen a net sheet. So the seller's basically telling the listing agent, hey, we're not getting enough money, we're not gonna sell the house. Not the way it works. When you're in a contract to sell a house, you need to sell a house. Just because you didn't do your due diligence up front doesn't mean that you get to just tell the, the buyer to pound sand. But that's what this seller did. They basically said, we're not signing, bye, right? Okay. Now here's the fun part. What did they want the money for? Okay, I can't even make this stuff up. This one I was like, oh my God, tell a novella, here we come. They wanted the money so that one of the, the sellers, excuse me, could do a full body and face reconstruction in Columbia. I'm not kidding. And then someone else dug into this person's background and found out that that person has like issues of, you know, check fraud. And, and basically they wanted the money from selling their house to create a new identity. No joke. How crazy is that? Seriously, like <laughs> I'm just a lender and we hear all this crazy stuff. So anyways, they're trying to cancel the sale because they're not going to get enough for their, you know, reconstructive surgery. Okay, the buyer's like, forget it. Like, I'm not okay with that because I let all these other houses go by. This is the house I want. This is the house I negotiated for. You know, the buyer had paid for appraisal, inspections, you know, it's the day of closing that they're being told we don't want to sell it anymore. Can you guys imagine your stuff is packed? It's in a truck. Your family is excited. Your kids are picking out their room and the seller is like, psych, psych. So the buyer gets a real estate attorney. Right? And, and that's what you do in cases like this. In cases like this, you've got two different paths. Like, you've got the path where you're like, you know, 
okay, it wasn't meant to be, I don't wanna deal with crazy people, I'm out. And you've got the path of no, this is a legally binding contract and you need to abide by it or you need to pay penalties, right? And they went that route, which in situations like this, like if you're getting a house at a good price, if it's the house you want, it's definitely worth going that direction, but you definitely want a real estate attorney involved. So real estate attorney gets involved. It wasn't a big battle, it was probably a week. Um, and you know, the seller have moved out. Okay. Now here's some things from the lender perspective, right? Because the reason why we think you should expect the unexpected is he was in a good mindset where he wasn't going to rush it to put himself at risk. Right. Whereas if he had given notice on his apartment and had to move out two days later, or there was some sort of pressure on him, he could have been in a position where they had us fund the loan before the seller moved out, okay? In a situation like this, the last thing you want to do is give that seller money until they are out of that house. It is a recipe for someone who will never leave. And people go, well, wait, can that actually happen? Yeah. Google it. You know, there was a huge thing during the COVID pandemic where people would sell their houses and not leave because they knew with COVID you couldn't evict them. It was happening in LA constantly. Um, different parts of the country. So yeah, there are some people that are sleazy enough to sell their house and never move out and make you, the buyer, go through the process of evicting them. So is this video meant to scare you? No, but look, like, you know, thankfully this buyer had gone to the house the day that the sellers were supposed to sign and the seller was really weird that day. They hadn't opened the door. They could see that nothing had been moved and based on the contract, they were supposed to be out. Okay, that was the first red flag. Second red flag was they wouldn't sign. Then you gotta get the real estate attorney involved. You know, just because they're saying, okay, we'll sign now, because the seller did say, okay, I'm gonna sign so you guys can close today. And we said, no, <laughs> you know, and this was up to the buyer, of course. We could have done either one. We said, we will close after you are out of the house. Okay, because once they have that money, best of luck, best of luck. So this one actually has a happy story, a happy ending. Uh, the seller did move out, yay. Um, we are funding the loan and the buyer will be moving in and he has two very large dogs in case the seller ever comes back. But yeah, in real estate, just because you have a contract, it's important to expect the unexpected. So as always guys, thank, for, thank you for watching. I am licensed in 48 states to do mortgages. I always have your back and I am here to help you. Thanks for watching guys.